<laughs> okay, so our topic today is a lot about breath. Um, we're going to be talking about breathing with sensitivity. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about why that's important as we get our practice going. We're going to start seated, but we are going to need some props today. Um, we're going to finish with a couple restorative postures. So if you have a bolster or um, two bed pillows would work. So make sure you have those nearby. We don't need them just yet. And then we're going to start seated and then we're going to be coming onto our bellies. So that's the beginning of practice. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody and we'll get started. <clears throat> All right, oh, I got this blind spot in my eyes. I hope you guys can see me okay. So super important to breathe with sensitivity, with subtlety, the softness. These are all ways that we can send a signal to our nervous system and our brain that we are safe. So the vagus nerve is a really long nerve that goes from our brain all the way through our body. It goes through our diaphragm. And so it's sensing what the diaphragm is doing. And if the diaphragm is not moving, it's kind of contracted, it senses that we're more in a state of stress or there's something to be afraid of, something we need to run from. But when we're breathing softly and with sensitivity, it sends that signal that everything is fine and that we can you know, reduce the stress hormones in our body. So the brain is sending out those stress hormones like um, adrenaline and cortisol and those kinds of things. And so when we breathe softly, we're reducing those stress hormones. The other important thing relates to our brain. So if we're not breathing well, um, we don't have enough of that support of our breath for our brain. And so when we don't have that support for our brain, the brain cells actually either get damaged or they can die off. And that can lead to things like dementia. So good thing we're yogis. We're going to have a long you know, vibrant life and we'll have healthy brains, hopefully, because we're learning to breathe properly. So go ahead and sit up nice and tall. Maybe take a moment, widen out your sit bones so that you feel really grounded through your base. And lengthen up tall through your spine. And if you're comfortable, you could close your eyes or just find a soft focal point and then start to focus on your breathing. And we'll find as we progress through the practice, our breath becomes a little more natural. So we're born breathing properly, correctly as babies. We breathe naturally low into the belly. We'll see that rising and falling of the belly in a, in a baby. But as life happens and we go through these stressful things in our lives, our breath eventually gets compromised and we tend to be reverse breathers. Now, as you continue to focus on your breath, think about breathing very smoothly. Meaning initially there's going to be little inconsistencies in the breath, like little moments of choppiness, a little breaks in the breath. And the softer you become with your awareness, approaching the breath with that sensitivity, we can start to smooth out any of those inconsistencies. So our breath is a manifestation of what is going on in our minds. And that's also very reciprocal. So our minds are a reflection of what is going on in our breath. So that two-way communication is always happening. So go ahead, we're gonna take a few more moments to just continue to read here, or to breathe here. And I'm gonna share an opening reading with you from this book that I reviewed in the newsletter. This is, um, the book called Breath by James Nestor. 
So he says, the magic of the nose and its healing powers was not lost on the ancients. Around 1500 BCE, Papyrus, one of the oldest medical texts ever discovered, offered a description of how nostrils were supposed to feed air to the heart and lungs, not our mouth. So we must breathe through our nose. A thousand years later, Genesis described how the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. A Chinese Taoist text from the 8th century noticed, noted that the nose was the heavenly door and that breath must be taken through it. Never do otherwise, the text warned, for breath would be in danger and illness would set in. So really important to breathe through our noses. I'll read a little bit more from that book later. We'll take about five more breaths and we're going to add a hand position. The hand positions in yoga are called mudras. We're going to take our hands and cross them in front of us. So I'm going to come closer to so make sure you guys can see. So cross your hands like this and then you're going to hook your thumbs. So hook your thumbs and then place your hands across your chest. Really span those fingers out wide. This is called Garuda Mudra. You might have heard that word before. Garuda is also the name for eagle pose. So eagle pose is Garudasana. So let's take a couple more breaths here into your belly. Breathing with sensitivity. So Garuda represents what we call in yoga prana, which is very much related to breath. And in the stories, the sustainer of the universe, whose name is Vishnu, rides around on this great mythic bird with huge expansive wings. And it is said that this bird represents prana, represents our life force energy. And the yogis say that our breath is like this great pranic bird. It flies, it swirls, but it also needs to settle. It needs to be harnessed. So today we work on kind of harnessing our awareness to our breath, to help better manage our life force energy, which can get depleted if our breath is out of sync. Very breath focused today. All right, go ahead and slowly release your mudra. And we're gonna come down onto our bellies and you're just gonna stack up your arms like this and put your forehead on your arms. So coming into crocodile position. <coughs> so crocodile position is a classic uh, pose in yoga that is used for pranayama practice. So pranayama is the um, manipulation or control of our breath. So we're going to come down now, and it is said that in this position, um, it sort of forces us to breathe diaphragmatically, which is what we want. So we want you to feel the sensation of your belly pressing into the floor as you breathe. Now you can play with the distance of your arms here. If they're too far out, you'll be too flat. If they're too far in, your lower back might bother you. So play with the distance of your arms here. And we're gonna stay for a few more breaths, just like this. So continue to feel the sensation of your belly pressing into the floor as you inhale. And as you exhale, let that breath come all the way out. So try not to shortchange yourself on the exhale phase. So if you can follow that exhale all the way out, just as softly and sensitively as you are taking in the inhalation. 
take about five more breaths here. Again, looking for areas of the breath that feel choppy and consistent. And the more you relax into this posture, the smoother and more even that breath becomes. So as we start to move more, our challenge will be, can we continue to breathe with sensitivity, even as we start to move our bodies and perhaps challenge ourselves in some different poses. Finishing up here, another breath or two. All right, and then from here, we're gonna slowly slide our hands back under the chest and press into tabletop position. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a few cat cows. And again, breathing with sensitivity as we do, feel free to pad your knees with a blanket if you're on a hard surface. So we'll take an inhale, exhale, round the spine. Inhale, arch, lifting your sit bones, lifting your gaze. Exhale and round. So on your own, go ahead and do a few more cycles. And as you continue, just have that sense of breathing with sensitivity. Let's do three more full cycles here. Really take your time, go slowly. Another important aspect of breathing with sensitivity is slowing ourselves down. After your third cycle, no rush, we're gonna come into child's pose and pause in your child's pose. If child's pose is too much for your knees today, feel free to come on your back and hug your knees into your chest. That would be fine as well. And we're gonna stay here again for a little bit of time. So a little bit slower today, a little bit time being in a pose, being with that subtle breath. In your child's pose, see if you can breathe into your back body. That sensitivity with that awareness, subtlety. I've been studying with my teacher this week and he gave us a word that means subtle. It's shuksma. Shuksma is a Sanskrit word that means subtlety. So we're cultivating that shuksma today in our practice. <clears throat> All right, so from here, from your child's pose, go ahead and walk your hands up and we're gonna come back into our tabletop pose. And we're gonna tuck our toes underneath. So we're getting a little stretch to the plantar fascia. And we're gonna continue with kind of a cat cow, but we're gonna to start to move our hips back. So we'll inhale, lift the gaze and lift this uh, arch a little bit of your spine. And then exhale, push back, and you can go back any amount here. And as you go back, you're going to notice more of a stretch to the soles of your feet. You might not go all the way. That's okay. Inhale, come forward, look up, arch your spine. Exhale, lower your chin, the little rounding of your spine, and move back. Now, if this is too much on your feet, go ahead and put your feet flat again. Let's do three more cycles. Inhale. Exhale, move back. So we have multiple diaphragms in the body. We have our respiratory diaphragm, <clears throat> excuse me. We have our pelvic diaphragm. And there's also a diaphragm in the feet as well as in our throat. And they all breathe together. We don't often talk about it. One more time. It gives the body buoyancy and lift. 
Okay, from here back to your tabletop, and now we're going to tuck, keep those toes tucked, and we're going to lift up to a brief downward facing dog. We're gonna continue that cycle. So knees down, inhale, look forward. Exhale, shift back towards your heels. Inhale, forward table. Exhale up, downward facing dog. If the dog is too much today, feel free to stick with the first two movements. So just shift back towards your child. So one more cycle like this on your own, just continue. Are we still breathing with sensitivity? Good, and now from here, coming up to table, let's grab our blocks. And we're gonna step through to a lunge. So bring your right foot forward. Feel free to pad that back knee if you need a little cushioning there. And when you feel steady, let's bring the hands up in front of the heart. And we're gonna do our Garuda Mudra. So you're gonna cross your thumbs like we did earlier and place your hands right across your chest. Yeah, so hook the thumbs and place the hands flat across the chest. Okay, so from here, take an inhale. As you exhale, pull the tailbone down, slide a bit into your front knee, and just a little bit of a lift of your chest here. See if you can continue with that breathing with sensitivity. Root into your front foot. One more breath. And then slowly release your arms, circle them out to the side and overhead. And now we're gonna hook the thumbs overhead. Spread out wide through your fingertips and really reach those arms up as high as you can, lengthening the spine. Keep rooting into your front foot, hold here another breath. And then slowly release, hands back down to the blocks. Step back, tabletop position. And then let's step the other foot forward, coming into the lunge on the other side. When you're ready, go ahead and bring your hands up. Garuda Mudra, put the opposite thumb in the front this time. Spread out wide through your fingers. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, deepen into that front knee a little bit. Maybe lift your chest up a little bit into a baby back bend. And then find that soft, subtle breath. Hold here another moment. And then we'll release and we'll circle those arms up and overhead. Opposite thumb in the front, spread wide through your fingers. Inhale, reach those arms up as high as you can. Keep hooking that tailbone a little forward to help lengthen your lower back. Good, and then release, hands down, step back. Okay, set those blocks off toward the front of your mat. And we'll make our way to down dog, just for a moment, and then walk your hands back toward your feet. You're in a forward fold at the back of your mat. We're gonna inhale, lift up halfway, hands up on the thighs. Exhale and fold. As you fold, let that chin come in if it feels okay for your body. Two more cycles, inhale halfway. Exhale, fold, chin in. Keep a little bend in those knees, protecting your back. One more time. On your next inhale, let's circle the arms all the way out and overhead. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Good. 
Okay, from here, inhale, reach your arms up. We're gonna do that thumb hook overhead. We're quite enough space here today. Okay, thumb hook overhead. Kind of pull your fingers apart from each other. Spread your fingers out, reach the arms up. At the same time, root down into your feet, engage your legs. Now, as you inhale, we're gonna try a heel lift. Lift your heels off the ground, so a little bit of balance. And as you exhale, heels down. Then try that two more rounds. Inhale, lift up. We're spreading wide through the fingertips. Exhale down. One more time. This time as the heels come down, release your arms, fold forward over your legs. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach those arms all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Good, we're gonna add on to that sequence. We're gonna go through it a couple of times. Inhale, reach the arms up. Opposite thumb in the front, spread your fingers. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale down. Two more like this. Breathing with sensitivity. And this time, heels down, bend your knees, come into chair pose. Keep the hands as they are if you can with that thumb hook. If it's too much on your shoulders, go wider. Make sure weight comes back into your heels. Press through the feet and reach through those arms. Good, inhale, exhale, release. Come to stand, hands at your heart. Good, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward over your legs, little bend in those knees. Inhale, halfway, hands on thighs. Exhale, fold forward, keep that bend in the knees. Inhale, reach the arms up. This time, right into that thumb hook, lift your heels if you can. Good, lower your heels, come right into chair this time. One time this time. Reach through the arms, press through your feet. And then release the arms out wide, like that big wingspan of the chronic bird, and fold your chest toward your thighs. Keep the crown of the head reaching forward, arms spreading wide. And then as you exhale, fold forward, straighten the legs. Hand them out, try to keep a little bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up, put the opposite thumb in the front, lift your heels. Good, exhale, heels down, chair pose, bend your knees. Keep reaching through your arms, try not to flare your ribs, you might need to pull that low belly and lengthen tail. And then arms fly out wide, Bring your chest towards your thighs, tuck your chin in, try not to kink your neck, and then fold forward. Straighten the legs any amount. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, arms all the way out and up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, we're gonna come back to the lunge and we're gonna add on. So we'll bring in a little bit more standing poses here. So blocks at the top of your mat if they're not there. Okay, we're gonna repeat the sequence we just did and then add in the lunge and we'll add in some other things, okay? So inhale, reach the arms up, hook the right thumb in front. Lift your heels. Good, heels down, chair pose. Make 
make sure we're not overly arching the back here. So tone the belly, lengthen the tail. Fly the arms out to the side, spread wide through your fingers, belly toward your thighs. Fold forward, straighten your legs any amount. Inhale, hands up on your blocks. Step your right foot to the back of the mat. Drop down onto the back knee. Good, back toes can be tucked or, or untucked, your choice. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, go Ruta Mudra, right hand in front, spread your palms across your chest. That's it, hold there, take an inhale. Exhale, deepen into your front knee, maybe a little lift of your heart. Good, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands to blocks. Good, tuck your back toes now, lift the back knee. We're gonna spin that back heel down to the ground. Keep a bend in your front knee and then inhale, reach your arms up, warrior one position. Okay, lower the hands to the heart. Find your Garuda Mudra, right thumb in front, hands on the front of your chest. And then we're gonna hold here for a few breaths. Press down into the feet, keep lifting through the chest and breathe. Keep your eyes soft, gaze soft. Find that subtlety of the breath. One more. Good. Now release, circle your arms out, hook the right thumb in the front and stretch those arms up tall as you can. Try to touch the ceiling with your fingertips. And then release, hands down to your blocks. Step forward and fold over your legs. Inhale, circle the arms all the way out to the sides and overhead. And exhale. Bring your hands to your heart. So we're gonna repeat that on side two. Inhale, reach the arms up, left thumb hooks in front. Lift your heels for a moment. Bend the knees, chair pose. Weight is in your heels. Fly your arms out to the side, belly toward the thighs. Great chronic bird. Fold forward over your legs. As you inhale, hands on blocks, lift your chest, step your left foot to the back of your mat. Move those blocks back so they stay under your shoulders, drop the back knee down. Toes are tucked or untucked, your choice. And when you feel steady, we're gonna reach those arms up. Good, left thumb in front, Garuda Mudra right in front of your chest. Maybe bending a little deeper into your front knee, maybe lifting the heart. You can go as far as you like here. If you want to deepen this, you can always deepen into that front knee and take more of a back bend. But this is gentle, so do what works for your body. And then release, circle those arms all the way up. Hook your left thumb in front, reach up. <coughs> Okay, hands come down to your blocks. Lift your back knee. Spin that back heel down. Front knee stays over the ankle. Circle the arms up. Warrior one. Good. Left thumb in the front. Garuda Mudra across your chest. Breathing here for five breath cycles. Focus on rooting into the ground. So we're tethering our awareness. Focus on soft, subtle breath. What does it mean to you to breathe with sensitivity? Good. 
Good. Next inhale, release, circle the arms out, left thumb in front, reach those arms up, lengthen out. Good. Release, hands back down to your blocks. And then spin onto the ball of the back foot, step it forward, and fold over your legs. Inhale, reach those arms all the way out and up. Exhale, hands to your heart. We're gonna go through that sequence one more time. We're gonna add on a few more things. So let's try. Inhale, reach up, right thumb in front. Or Lift your heels, sorry. Lower down chair pose, bend your knees. Fly your arms out to the side, fold toward your thighs. Release your hands to your blocks. Inhale, lengthen your spine and step your right foot to the back of the mat. Move your blocks back so they're under your shoulders. Drop down onto that back knee. So no Garuda this time, inhale, just reach the arms up. Exhale, hands down. Lift your back knee, spin onto the ball of your back foot, warrior one. And now we're gonna open it up to warrior two. So now the chest is facing the long edge of your mat. Sorry, my mat's always moving on my carpet here. And we're gonna hold for our five breaths. So look over your front fingers. Really open wide through your arms, that big wingspan. Soft subtlety of the breath. Smooth it out. Even though we're working a little harder now, can you still breathe softly? All right, from here, bring your hands to your hips. We're gonna straighten the front leg, parallel your feet so that your feet are both facing the long side of your mat. If you need blocks for a forward fold here, grab them, bring them in front of you. Hands on your hips. Root into your legs, open wide through your chest and your collarbones. Take a little bend in your knees. Inhale. And as you exhale, hinge at your hips, fold forward. And start with your hands right underneath your shoulders so we can lengthen the spine. Send your inner thighs, pelvic floor back. Crown of the head reaches forward so we feel elongated through the spine. Find your soft, subtle breath. The breath should feel like a very fine stream through the center channel of your body. Now, if you want to go deeper here, you could fold forward as long as you can still find that soft breath. If we go too far, our breath starts to get compromised and we start to feel more stressed. So if you can stay with a soft breath, feel free to go deeper. We've got two more breath cycles. After that second breath cycle, if you fold it, come back up to the hands under shoulders, lifting your chest, pivot around back to your blocks and you're in a lunge. And then we're gonna step forward. Fold at the top. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. We're going through one more time. We are gonna do some nice restoratives at the end. Okay, inhale, reach the arms up. Left thumb in front, lift your heels. Land in chair pose, bend your knees. Sink your hips. 
Arms fly out to the side, fold into chest towards your thighs. Release, hands to blocks. Inhale, lengthen, straighten those legs any amount and step your left foot to the back of your mat. Move your blocks back, drop down onto that knee. Good, inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, hands right down this time. Lift the back knee, warrior one, spin the back heel down. But inhale, reach those arms up. And then we're gonna open it up to our warrior two. So I'm just gonna change my orientation so I can stay facing you guys. Look over your left fingers and find your five soft breaths. So when we hold the poses, we're more stable, we're more still, and that's anchoring that prana, anchoring the breath. Your eyes soft, face soft. Okay, from here, hands onto your hips, straighten that front leg, parallel the feet. Root the feet down, anchor the hips down, tailbone down, lift your chest, and then a slight bend in your knees, hinge at your hips, and fold forward. That's it, start in that halfway shape again, so hands under your shoulders. Keep that slight bend in your knees and think about your inner thighs, pelvic floor drawing back. Crown of the head reaching forward. So create length in the spine. If you can maintain that nice subtle breath, feel free to fold forward over your legs. You would like to deepen this a bit, reach your hands out to your ankles and hold on to your ankles or keep hands where they are underneath your shoulders. If you've got those ankles, press ankles and hands into each other. Stay with that soft breath a couple more moments. Yogis say that when our prana is kind of more disturbed, our mind is going to be more disturbed. But as our mind settles, the breath settles. Or as the breath settles, the mind settles. Go ahead, walk your hands back out under your shoulders. Pivot around back to your lunge. Hands can come on your blocks. And then we take a big step forward and fold over your legs. Inhale, reach those arms all the way out and up. And exhale, draw your hands to your heart. And let's take our five breaths here in our mountain pose. So all of that stillness now, right now in this moment, after all the movement. So notice the difference, the contrast now being still, just being with your breath. Soft breath into the belly, like a smallest stream of breath coming in through the center of your body. One more. Good. Next inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale to your halfway lift, step back, downward facing dog. And we're gonna come right into a child's pose from here. So you can go in your child's pose. If child's pose is not feeling good, you could always come onto crocodile on your belly or on your back and hug your knees to your chest. So take your choice, either child's pose, knee hug, or crocodile. Okay. 
One more breath cycle here. And then go ahead and slowly make your way up. We're gonna be coming onto our backs now. Hard work is over. We're gonna do supported bridge pose. So grab one block. Then we're gonna come down onto our backs and slide the block underneath the back of your sacrum. So we get a little lift in that lower body. Take a moment, come up on your tiptoes and lengthen your tailbone toward your feet. And that'll help the lower back here. Just make sure that that block is not on your fleshy part, it's on the bony part of that lower back. And then bring your arms into a robot position. So palms are facing in towards each other. And we're gonna tuck the shoulder blades in, lifting the heart up. And then once you've got the heart lifted, you could relax your arms down, but just see if you can have a little shelf with your shoulder blades to help open and lift the heart. So we have a baby back bend here. So there's a little bit of an arch in my back. I'm gonna keep that and take a few breaths. Find that breath of sensitivity into the belly. Be subtle with your awareness of the breath. Smoothing out any inconsistencies. And then from here, we're gonna come into our inversion. So we're gonna bring the knees up and in toward the chest and extend those legs up toward the ceiling, if that feels okay. If that's too much, you can always keep feet down, keep working your supported bridge. Keep the chest lifted with that little shelf of your shoulder blades. This is very nourishing for our lung tissue to invert our bodies. So all the fluid, the blood flow comes toward our lungs, our heart, and our head. As you hold here, stay with that sensitive breath. The sacrum be heavy. So if your feet are coming a little bit too far forward, you're gonna feel lighter in the tailbone. See if you can get the legs to be right over your hips. Let that sacrum drop. The outer shoulders are heavy, but the inner shoulder is lifting your heart. Let's take three more breaths. After your third breath, very slowly start to bend the knees. You can lower both feet or one at a time. And softly let your feet come back down onto the ground. And then have another pause for a moment here. All right, so from here, go ahead and lift your hips. We're gonna slide that block out of the way and slowly come down one vertebra at a time until you get to the bottom. Untuck your shoulder blades if they still feel really tucked in. Arms out to a T. Take a couple of windshield wipers side to side.
And then bring those knees back up. We're gonna roll over to the side. And do take your time. We're gonna press ourselves up. Okay, go ahead and grab those two pillows or your yoga bolster. And we're gonna use that next for another kind of uh, pose that opens up that area of the lung tissue. So we're gonna put the bolster horizontal. So the same length as the short edge of your mat. And then most of us need something under our heads here. <clears throat> so you're gonna either take a pillow or a folded up blanket on the other side. That's where your head will go. Depending on how many props you have, you might also make a little knee support by folding an extra blanket or pillow underneath your knees. So I'm gonna show you guys, the bolster is gonna go kind of under the backs of your lungs. Okay, so it looks like this, it's pretty high up there. So not in your lower back, middle back, you want it right under the back of your heart. And then your head is gonna drop back. So for some of us, this is gonna be a lot. So if it is, you're gonna to have to use your second blanket underneath your head and forego the knee pillow. Unless you've got lots of stuff, that's great. Okay, so for me, I want that extra. So now I feel pretty comfortable here. The big stretch into the side body and the chest area. So bring the head up as far as you need to to be comfortable. So I'm gonna check in on you guys there. And if for any reason it's too much with the bolster, you could just lessen it by using a folded blanket, and then it would be less intense. But for me, it feels pretty good. Um, legs can be out straight or bent if that helps you feel better. You might bend those knees. Initially, let's let the arms stay down for a couple breaths. We are gonna try and take them overhead in a moment. Find that sensitive breath. Now, those of you who would feel good to do so, take your arms and reach them overhead and hold on to opposite elbows. Now, if that's pinchy, you could try your arms out to a T. That's another option. Or you can just keep them on your belly. You're still getting the back bend. If you want more, go for that elbow clasp and the arms reach overhead. Breathing here into the belly. Smoothing out any inconsistent areas in the breath. Allow your legs to be heavy if they're straight out. And at some point, if you have the opposite elbows, go ahead and switch so the opposite arm is in the front. And then stay with it a little bit longer. Don't stay anywhere that causes discomfort or causes your breath to be compromised. So choose another option if it's too much. Even as you breathe into your belly, can you be aware of and notice that as you inhale, the back body sort of presses into that bolster or pillow. Last three breaths.
After your third breath, do you take your time, let the arms come back down. Maybe on your belly or your solar plexus, take a couple breaths with the arms down. And then if your legs are out straight, go ahead and bend your knees. Carefully rolling over towards your side. And use your arms to press yourself up. Good. Okay, we're going to transition right into Shavasana from here. Our time has gone quickly. So we're going to switch the bolster so that it's now vertical. And let's take a block and elevate the bolster. So the head is a little elevated. You're going to want a pillow or a folded blanket for the head. And then grabbing anything else you need, maybe something from your knees. Maybe you want to cover up. It's starting to get a little colder outside. So that weight can help harness the prana. So groundedness is super important to our prana. Making sure that the tailbone is kind of scooted out from under you. So I like to just lift my hips, scoot the tailbone a little forward. And then as you come back, find a lengthening of your spine along that bolster. And then the pillow is not on your shoulders, just under your head. And then arms might be out at your side or on your body. I'll give you a moment to settle. I'm going to be coming up so I can continue to guide you. And then eventually finding your soft, subtle breath. Notice any shifts from when you first observed your breath. What are the qualities of the breath at the end of your practice? Maybe a little smoother, less choppy. Maybe softer and more subtle. Remember to follow your exhales all the way out. Don't shortchange the exhale phase, really important. The exhale phase is more settling, calming, grounding. Benefiting the nervous system. Allow there to be a softness in the whole body. As we breathe with sensitivity, have that sense of sensitivity throughout all of your tissues. Particularly the tissues around your lungs, your chest, your rib cage, your back. Can you get softer in the area between the ribs? Soften the intercostal muscles. You soften the area around your collarbones and your shoulder. Let them spread wide as if they're melting, collarbones, shoulders melting over the props. Allow your back body to soften into the bolster or the pillows.
Get really subtle in your awareness of the movement of the breath in the area of your thoracic, area of your rib cage, area of your belly. And the rise and fall of the abdomen. Allow even the palms and the arms to be really soft, sensitive to the area of your palms. So it's important here to empty any strain and tightness out of our arms, out of our hands. Imagine the skin on the palms and the tips of your fingers being really receptive to the flow of prana. And as we relax more and more and, and the breath has its effect on the nervous system, we're shifting out of those stressful hormones more into the serotonin and the endorphins. So those feel good hormones as opposed to the stressful ones. All right, everyone, take your time now to come back to awareness. Noticing again how you feel here at the end of your practice. Let your breath get a little deeper, a little more conscious. It's a signal to your body it's time to move. Of longer inhales, and when you're ready, begin small movements fingers, toes, moving as you feel ready to a bigger movement. Eventually, coming over to your side for a brief pause, and then we'll make our way up to a seated position. Just feel free to sit up onto some support so that you can find the tops of your sit bones, widen the sit bones, and get that nice open chest, open collarbones. 
We're going to work with our Garuda Mudra for our finishing practice. This time, we're going to hook the right thumb in the front, and we're going to let the hands rest down low, if you can, below your navel. So we're almost making a little, a little pot here, like a little support. And then we're going to close the eyes or find a soft focal point and find your sensitive breath. We're going to do several positions here. So continue to breathe. The hands be soft. So this mudra symbolizes the wings of a bird, represents our inner freedom. It is said to help balance our energy on both sides of the body and helps calm if we are feeling particularly vata in our um, constitution, meaning we've got a lot of air element, our prana is not tethered, our mind is swirling. This helps bring all of that into balance. This mudra also said to help fight exhaustion, awaken our inner strength and inner powers, and brings healing to a tired body, boosts our vitality. Let's bring it up now a little higher. So slightly like in front of the navel, above the navel. So if you were low below the navel, bring it to the navel or slightly above. So my arms are a little shorter. I can't get all the way down there. So just move it up a few inches and then continue with your soft breath. This is like a meditation with a mudra, a meditation on the breath. The mudra is also said to be good for alleviating pain in the body. It activates circulation. The prana is responsible for all of the circulatory systems in the body and our nervous system. So it creates movement in the body. It gives life to our body. Now, finally, let's bring it back onto the chest like we did throughout practice. And we'll take just a couple more breaths here. Finally, let's go ahead and bring the hands together in front of the heart space. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, bow your head down to your heart. Thank you so much, everyone. Namaste. All right. I hope you feel good. 